All right, so we have a little time. We have more time than we did yesterday. So I think we'll actually go through this example um, of this interactive figure. So the, the interactive figure, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about that again, because this was really one of our motivations is in this big idea to have open science, to have um, people be able to easily explore the data that you've created and to um, draw their own conclusions from it. And so you can make an interactive figure and then somebody can, can convince themselves that what you're saying makes sense or they can add their own, um, perhaps their own tracks to it or their own annotations. And um, perhaps they have their own personalized track, their own domain annotations that they've made and they can see if they actually agree with your conclusions. So um, the paper, the Rao et al. Cell 2017 paper, is looking at what happens to genome architecture when you remove cohesin and then introduce it again. And so we are going to, I'm going to like exit out all of these. Well, I guess I'll keep this one because that's where I, that makes it a little easier for me. Just the one map, but I'm going to load a new map in here. So you can also just go to a fresh aidenlab.org slash juicebox, click load map. Now we're going to load from the juicebox archive. So there's the juicebox archive. You might've seen a little bit, just a glimpse of that. Um, in a sort of a more of a folder format when I loaded Juicebox desktop. That's basically the same as this. Um, it's all the same maps. Um, but here we have the same kind of format that hopefully you've gotten a little bit used to. It's 570 different maps here. A lot of them are, um, you know, like we have all the replicates, for example. Um, I, those are available in ENCODE, but they're, um, they're archived because mostly people aren't looking at those. So if we do search, we're gonna search for it's combined is one thing. Let's look for 2017. All right, so we have untreated, combined, and then we have all these oxen treated, blah, blah, blah maps. And then we have these true maps are from other people that we asked them to, they, they did a neat experiment, and so we suggested that they share their high C files with us, and they did, and so we uploaded it to our archive. All right, so. Um, we do load map juice box and we're doing the combined treated six hour to start. It's combined randomized. Oh, that's not us. Combined treated. Oxen treated. I think this is the one we want. Oxen treated six hours combined. And you click OK. That's going to change that map. And what did I say? Chromosome eight, right? We're going to go chromosome eight. And we're going to go between like right around 134. So chromosome eight, I'm going to click on the here this time. I don't remember what I said, 133. So around here. All right, what do we say? One three three eight hundred and one three four six hundred. One three three eight hundred. One three four six hundred. Okay, that seems fine. Right around here. Okay, and then we're going to go normalization balanced, and we're going to set the color scale value to fifty. So this is actually something that we always report. And I think it is important to report um, and if you are doing a paper what you've thresholded your red at. All right, so now we're going to add a new map. Click the plus button. Now the next one, we're going to be doing withdraw 20 minutes. And then we're going to do 40, 60, three hour and untreated. So first we go. So we have our black bar around here. We go load map, juice box archive. And now we've got 20 minutes. Okay. I'm doing normalization balance. I'm going to do a plus. Now we've got to scroll down to the bottom. We see it. There it is. Our new map that loaded. Load map, juice box archive. We're going to do 40 minutes. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and normalize it. Balance. Hit the plus button, load map, juice box archive, 60 minutes. 
I'm gonna go ahead and normalize it. Hit the plus button. Make sure that the map showed up. So you don't want to. What did I do? 60. Now we do 180. 180 minutes. Hit the plus button again. Load map. Choose Fox Archive. Untreated. Click OK. Let's go down to the bottom here, and then I'm going to do my normalizations again. Balanced. Balanced. And so, perhaps you noticed. <laughs> so these are maps are. So like the final map, I say the final map is deeply sequenced. Like the first one should have a color scale value of fifty, and then the other one should be fifteen. So let's make this fifteen. 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 This is 15 again, and this is 50 again. Oh, oh, this is the wrong map, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to actually put the right map in. Um, so I'm going to add again, load map, choose box archive, untreated combine the top one is the one that's deeply sequenced. The synchronized one is not as deeply sequenced. I was wondering why it looked funny. So balanced and then 50. All right. And so this was an experiment. Um, we have a figure link also to this. This was an experiment that we did with this um, uh, oxygen reducible um, line that where um, basically we're degrading cohesion. And so what you see is when it's treated, um, there. And, and the cohesion is degraded, a lot of the structure disappears. And then as you withdraw and you have more cohesion coming back in, these structures appear. So that was the conclusions of that paper. And this is exactly the, the, what we showed in the paper. So these are the pictures on the um, thing. You can do load tracks to load tracks and show off. But you can also just click this link. We actually, in the cell paper itself, um, there's a link from the, in the caption of the figure to exactly this, to an interactive figure, and these are little juice boxes. So they're just the same as you saw here, and you can move it around, it'll move it around, it'll take a little while, um, but it's gonna um, do just like you would. You can scroll, you can play with it um, in the same way that you can play with anything else. And so this is showing you all the figures, the B figure, and then the E figure is showing you these um, tracks associated with it um, and showing the appearance of, of these loops. And you could go to a different portion of the genome if you thought, oh, why did you cherry pick chromosome eight? Well, maybe there's, in this case, it's also showing you chromosome four, et cetera, et cetera. But you could also see it, um, you could also see the same thing and uh, have a chance to really explore the data interactively. All right. So that's everything I have. Yes. Hello. Uh, yeah. Uh, why the first figure use the color scale value of 50 and uh, another use the 15? Yes, that's a great question. So how you set the color scale, as I showed a little bit earlier, really does affect um, what features you may or may not see. And I do encourage you to, you know, and it's one of the reasons that we really encourage these sort of interactive figures and this sharing is for, for people to really, you know, convince themselves um, that there's no funny business. But the bottom line is the reason that I suggested that the, this one be 50 and the last one be 50 and these be 15 is because I actually know something about the sequencing depth of these experiments. So this one is sequenced quite deeply, the, the oxen um, six hour combined, as is the um, untreated. These are both sequenced quite deeply. Um, I can probably bring up juice box again to show you exactly how deeply. And then the, um, the experiments where the oxygen was withdrawn are not, they're not as deeply. So you could have 50 on them, but that sort of wouldn't be fair because you're just capping, it's basically based on sort of capping the diagonal and you just don't have enough reads for, like this is saying that red means 15 and everything above red, everything above 15 is going to be like maxed out. It's like a, it's like a ceiling. If I do 50, you're going to see things sort of disappear. 
I mean, they're still visible, but um, but it's not really the right scale because these experiments weren't sequenced deeply enough for that to be meaningful. Yeah, I think another way to also think about this is if you took the maps and divided them by the average value, then that would be like a fair thing to do, right? Then you can take a look at all the maps. They're all div divided by the average value of that map. But if a map is sparser because, you know, it has maybe, let's say, um, I guess maybe we'll have the numbers, but if the, the deeper maps have like 3 billion reads or 6 billion reads, um, then they'll have a lot more data involved. And then those uh, shallower maps might only have, you know, 500 million reads or maybe 1 billion reads. So a fraction of the data uh, that the deeper maps have. Um, and since that color scale is just based on raw read counts, they need to be scaled differently. I see, thank you. So now I've gotten myself into a corner because I thought that it would be in the menu and it's not, but it should be in the data set metrics, let's see. Oh, <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> um, so it's 3.4 billion reads, the, this, this map. So, um, and then I think if I load, I mean, I can load it as a control. Um, one of the replicates like the, um, uh, like the 20 minute withdrawal, for example. So now it's loading that as a control. That's kind of the similar thing that we saw with the um, with the AB maps in the juice box on the web. Yeah. Uh, one we, thing, by the oh, we should, sorry, we should really work on the MVI. Mohammed. That's why it's yeah. slower. Um, so if then if you do show control data set metrics, that's going to be that twenty um, the twenty read one, the twenty minute uh, one, and um, the statistics. It's, it's a little bit under a billion reads for the sequence reads. And we can actually look at the high C contact number to see like how many actual contacts, non-duplicates were there. So that would also um, tell us a little bit more about that, okay. uh, about the ratio between them. Yeah, so the high, yeah. So we can actually probably open both. But one of them has has the map, has the, the other statistics in it. So yeah, you can see that this is 2.6 billion high C contacts and this is only 678,000 high C contacts. So then it, yeah, I'm gonna do chromosome eight. But it's gonna take a little while. See if I can do the same kind of thing. Yep. So it's the same drawing in a box, just like you would in juice box on the web to zoom in. What were we looking at? 130, something like that. Um, and five. I think this is going to be a little off diagonal. 138, is that right, Mohammed? Sounds right. Um, well, so the one that has structure is the one that's showing instead of the control right now because it's the yeah. entry. So then we can do um, view. Oops. Are, are you trying to show versus or? You can show, uh, yeah, I was going to show versus. Okay. So you can do um, observed, you can do control. There's also keyboard shortcuts for that. Oops, not expected. Observed. Or you can show versus, this is just, I'll just briefly show this, the observed versus control. So now the observed, you can see the control is on this side of the diagonal and the observed is on this side of the diagonal. So then you can actually really see the differences. And you can also sort of explore the color range to, to see how, how much you believe that. That's a little brief, a little brief juice box desktop. I do encourage you to go through the, um, the rest of this, if you want to learn a lot more about Deucebox Desktop, and it'll it'll take you through more slowly the kinds of steps that we just did um, to see the files load. You can look at the pictures. The way you load annotations is slightly different. Um, there's like a, an annotation panel, um, but it's all pretty much in the same, um, you know, it's in the same theme because they are, are very similar code bases and similar functionality. All right, are there any final questions? I think we just have a few minutes left.
Um, did you, oh, was the forum link shown? Or the forum? Oh, I did not show that. So when you're looking at Juicebox, you might have noticed that up in the corner, we have this forum link. If you click it, which I just did, didn't quite mean to do that. We have this um, forum. It's a Google group, 3D Genomics, that we, is very active. Um, we have lots of posts and uh, you can search it if you're confused, if something isn't working for you and you get an error, you can always search it. It's probably your, answer, your question's been answered before, but if not, or if you are having trouble finding it, um, you should just ask a question. So you can always post a question and we um, answer them very frequently and, uh, and we have a pretty active, active user groups that can, can help you or uh, Muhammad or I or Olga can help you um, with any of the problems that you're having either with, I mean, also with hiccups or with um, juicer tools or with um, 3D DNA, which is the, um, how to use juice box to assemble um, how to use juice box and high C data to assemble uh, to come up with beautiful chromosome length assemblies. So, all right. Now, are there any questions? <laughs>